Welcome students. We have been learning about the fundamental quantities in the previous class. Today also let us continue with the fundamental quantities. The next fundamental quantity that we are going to learn is amount of substance. Suppose I give you few copper coins and I ask you to count them. You will very easily count it and tell me the exact number. But if I give you only one copper coin and I ask you to count the number of atoms or molecules, you will find it very difficult to do that. Why? Because you know that atoms are very small, they are indivisible, they could not be seen with the naked eye. So what is the method used? Here we have an indirect method to count the number of atoms or molecules. Before getting into it, let us see what is this amount of substance. Amount of substance is nothing but the number of entities present in the substance. What is this entity word means? Let us see that. This entity means either an atom, molecule, ion, proton or electron. Now let us see the SA unit of amount of substance. The SA unit for amount of substance is mole and it is denoted by MOL. Now we can define what is this mole. Mole is the amount of substance which contains 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23 entities. What is this 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23? This we call it as the Avogadro number. Next, we'll move on to the next topic, luminous intensity. Have you seen a cricket match? While watching the cricket match, you would have seen the umpire holding a device in his hand and he'll be checking the intensity of the light. Okay, the instrument which is used to check the intensity of the light is called as photometer. Now let us define what this luminous intensity is. This luminous intensity is nothing but the measure of the power of the emitted light by the light source at a particular direction per unit solid angle. I repeat once again, this luminous intensity is nothing but the measure of the power of the emitted light by the light source by the light source per unit, so in a particular direction per unit solid angle. Then the SA unit for luminous intensity will be candela and it is denoted by small c and small d. What is this one candela of light? Suppose a wax candle is burning, the light emitted by the wax candle is equal to more or less equal to one candela. Next we will move on to the next topic plane angle. This plane angle is formed by the intersection of two straight lines or two planes. Okay? The plane angle is formed by the intersection of two straight lines or two planes at a particular point. SA unit for plane angle will be radian and it is denoted by RAD, all small letters and it is denoted by RAD. Before seeing, before defining a radian, let us first see what it is radian. Let us draw a circle. This will be the diameter of the circle and this portion you call it as the radius. Let us now define radian. Radian is the angle subtended at the center of the circle by an arc whose length is equal to the length of the radius. So this is the arc this length of the arc must be equal to the length of the radius of the circle. So this is your radian. We will move on to the next topic solid angle. Solid angle is nothing but the angle formed by the intersection of three or more planes at a common point. Before uh, going into that, let us see what is the solid angle by a simple picture. 
the SI unit for solid angle will be steradian and it is denoted by and it is denoted by small s and small r. This is not a circle, this is a sphere. Let us consider this to be the sphere and now let us define steradian. Steradian is nothing but the angle subtended at the center of the sphere whose surface area is equal to the square of the radius of the particular sphere. So, let us assume that the length of this radius is equal to 1 meter. In that case, the surface area will be equal to 1 meter square. So, steradian we have already defined steradian is denoted by small s and r. Okay. Steradian is nothing but the angle subtended at the center of the sphere and whose surface area is equal to the square of the radius. Next, let us see the difference between the plane angle and the solid angle. The first one, let us define the plane angle and solid angle that will be the first point. The first one will be plane angle is formed by the intersection of two straight lines or two planes and solid angle is formed by the intersection of three or more planes at a common point. And the second point will be plane angle is two dimensional and solid angle is three dimensional. And the third point SI unit of plane angle is radian and SI unit of uh, solid angle is steradian. And the radian is denoted by RAD small letters and here steradian is denoted by SR small letters. By that we complete fundamental units. We will move on to the next topic clocks. We will move on to the next topic clocks. Okay, why are clocks used? Clocks are used to measure the time intervals. We have two types of clocks here. The first clock will be analog clock. Here this analog clock could be operated either mechanically or electronically. That will be your first point either mechanically or electronically this could be operated. Here we have three hands here and the first hand we call it as R hand. This R hand is short and thick and it shows the exact R and the second one will be minute hand. This minute hand is long and thin and it shows the minute. And the third one will be second hand. This second hand is long and very thin and it shows the seconds. Okay. So, these three hands will be present in the analog clock. One rotation of the second hand indicates one minute. 60 rotations of the second hand indicates 60 minutes which is also equal to one hour. The second type of clock will be digital clock. The digital clock are also called as electronic clocks. Why? Because here the time is displayed directly, direct display of time and here you have 12 hour display or sometimes 24 hour display could also be seen. In recent clocks, you can see a bigger clock will be there in which you have date, day, month, year and temperature. Everything will be displayed in a single clock. By that we complete the two types of clocks that is analog clock and digital clock. We will move on to the next types of clocks based on their operating mechanism. Based on operating mechanism, clocks are again classified into two types. The first one will be quartz clocks. In this quartz clocks, these are activated by 
electronic oscillations which are controlled by the quartz crystal. See here, these are electronic oscillations which are controlled by quartz crystal. This quartz clocks are that is when you compare mechanical clocks to quartz clocks we can see that quartz clocks are very much efficient. Next we will move on to atomic clocks. In atomic clocks the periodic these are atomic clocks are vibrated by the periodic vibrations which are seen within the atom. That is all about atomic clocks and in atomic clocks you also see uses. The first use will be it is used in global positioning system. It is used in global positioning system. Second one it is also used in global navigation satellite system. Global navigation satellite system that is all about operating that is uh, classification of clocks based on operating mechanism. Next we will move on to the next topic. Accuracy in measurements. We know that measurements plays a very important role in science and technology. Whenever we conduct some experiment, there may sometimes occur errors. Let us see what these errors are. When we conduct an experiment and record the observations, we call that as measured value or observed value. But we also have another value which we call it as real value or the true value. The difference between the measured value and the true value is the error. Okay. Next we will move on to the next topic accuracy. Okay. After conducting the experiment you are recording the value which we call it as the observed value. The Suppose the observed value is very much closer to the real value, you call that your reading is much accurate. This we call it as accuracy and the last one will be approximation. Again you are doing an experiment, recording it, observed value you are getting it. Suppose the observed value is acceptably closer to the real value then you call it as approximation. So these are the uh, three terms which are used here in accuracy, errors, accuracy and approximation. By that we complete the measurements topic and uh, thank you children.